hey, I thought I would put together a um, quick Stardust kind of walkthrough on some of these uh, pixel portraits that I've been working on uh, the past week. Um, and specifically, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about this alphabet one uh, because it's something that I hadn't really tried before and I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm using uh, kind of the same technique for all of them and just playing with variation on the particle types. Uh, so let's look at this. So if we jump in here and look at this project, what I did was I shot some video off my webcam of just nonsense and I did it at night with uh, just illuminated by the uh, monitor so that's why it kind of has this high contrast look of course I'm just kind of crunching that and uh, accentuating that um, so that's what I'm kind of using as a luminance to drive uh, the animation and uh, the particle source I've made a let's see here yep not that one There we go. I made a pre-comp at 200 by 200 with each letter that I animated just uh, with a character offset. And that gives us an alpha. And it's just black and white. So if I jump back into here, you'll see that I'm using a grid emitter and um, my particle type is set to texture and I'm using that particle source here and I have it set to texture color using the alpha and I have it set to a random still frame so if we turn both of these fields off on the bottom what you'll see is that it's actually just a static grid um, what I did was uh, just pick my particle size is set to 15 and I've just generated a grid in the X and Y that kind of felt like everything was close enough to not overlap and so that's what our grid emitter is doing I'm emitting once and I have uh, no particles in the Z or just one and my particles have a long life just so they're kind of hanging out now, the first uh, field that I created, I did um, a field type, map, layer, and I picked my luma source, and I set it to current time, and I turned the sample quality to high. And right here are the um, properties it affects. So it's affecting the size over X and Y and it is affecting the size by uh, the default value here is 100. So that would, uh, if you look at my default size is uh, 15. So what it's doing is scaling everything that is black um, down and it's leaving everything that is white at the highest scale. So I kind of played with this value and found that like around 350 was nice to where it gave uh, us a nice overlap and uh, it felt like it still kind of the grid still was readable um, but it just gave a nice size variance and uh, fell off sharply of course you know we could go in and adjust the uh, values in here with the levels and kind of uh, control more carefully if you wanted it to some information out here so you didn't want it completely to fall off but this is just what I kind of thought was looking cool so that's what I did um, the other thing to notice is that their color I did set them to random from gradient and if we drop the color gradient down you can see I just have well, four colors and it's just randomly picking from those and the other um, field emitter that I have is exact same uh, it's set to maps layer I have it set to 
that same Luma source, current time, high, and then under the effect, I have it set to texture and X and Y instead of size. Now, what this does is, since I set it to random still frame, uh, as you saw that it was just putting, pulling a random still frame across from that uh, 26 frames of my texture. And what this does is let the luminance drive that uh, value. So as it gets closer to white, it goes further down, closer to 26. And then if it's um, zero or black value, it drops uh, lower. So that is pretty much the setup. And you can get some pretty interesting effects for, um, you know, <laughs> this isn't a very crazy setup and it's pretty fast and previews pretty nicely. My computer's a little slow, but granted, it's nice. And, you know, this is in 3D space, has depth of field. And, you know, if you really wanted to get crazy, you could do something with like playing with it in Z, you could add more particles and have that give much more layered effect if you wanted. And then if you maybe gave the particles some shadows, you could get some nice, interesting effects. Um, I was just going for like really quick, uh, kind of flat look, more of like a UI treatment or something. So that's kind of why I did that approach. Um, but again, it's really just wanted to talk about uh, using the texture parameter of the field emitter because I thought it was just something interesting that I hadn't really explored a lot. And uh, you could definitely get some interesting animations out of that. Uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, Thanks for watching.